going to be a cream contour and baking in depth tutorial. Ah, what did we do before contouring? I can't even imagine a makeup world without contouring. I love to contour and it is probably one of the most asked questions I have ever gotten anywhere on my YouTube, Instagram, on Snapchat, even in real life when I used to work in makeup, when I used to work at Sephora, when I used to work at Bare Minerals, even for my friends, like anytime I meet someone, I'm not joking, when I meet someone and they're like, oh, you do makeup? I need to learn how to contour. That's always the first question I get asked, never fails. So right here, right now, I'm gonna show you how I contour with different creams and also how I bake. I know contouring seems really complicated, but it's not, I promise. Once you get used to your face shape and how you want things to look, it's just like second nature. I believe in you, you got this. So I hope you're pumped. And if you wanna see my cream contouring and baking routine, then just keep watching. So you wanna start with your foundation or base first. I'm gonna be taking the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation sticks and I'm gonna be using two different colors today. One is more my skin tone and the other is a little bit lighter. I'm using shades 120 and 117 today. I'm gonna be placing the 120 more on the outer perimeters of my face and 117 more towards the center. You don't have to use two different shades, but I'm going all out today. I'm gonna to show you anything and everything you can do when it comes to contouring with creams. Starting with 120. Then I'm going to take 117 on the inner part. Blend everything out. I'm going to use a damp beauty blender. This is my favorite tool for foundation. This is just, I think this is the pro beauty blender, but this one is my favorite and it probably looks dirty because black shows everything, but I just washed it. But you just want to use it damp and pounce it all over the face and it's going to blend everything out. And I kind of like roll it a little bit as I do it. So now I'm going to highlight the face. I'm gonna be taking the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade Neutralizer. When you're picking a highlighting concealer, make sure it's a few shades lighter than your skin tone. So I'm gonna take this underneath the eyes first in a triangle, going down the side of the nose and then up. You don't have to worry about going all the way up to the eye because we're gonna blend it upwards. And I'm gonna go down the center of the nose, top of the lip, I'm also gonna go around the nose because most of us tend to get hormonal redness around there. I know I do, especially during winter. And then I'm also gonna go on my chin and then right here, I like to go just like in another little V. This time I'm gonna take the pointed end of my beauty blender and kind of pinch it to blend everything out. So now it's time for our tribal paint. We're gonna make all these lines all over our face. Our cheekbones are gonna look amazing and our bone structure is gonna be flawless. To contour, I'm gonna take another Makeup Forever foundation stick. This is in the shade 177. I love using foundation sticks to cream contour because I find they look the most natural because they're meant to be a foundation. So usually you can find a really good neutral tone in the line of foundation sticks. And also they blend super easy way easier than a lot of cream contour kits that I've tried. Bobbi Brown also has an amazing foundation stick for contouring, but I'm gonna be using this one today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is contour out my cheekbones so that my face looks a little bit more structured. This is 
the number one place I always contour. I always go from the top of my ear down. I usually stop a little bit before my nostril because I don't like to bring my contour in too far. I have really round cheeks, like baby face cheeks. I've always had big cheeks since I was a baby. If you don't have round big cheeks and you want that kind of look, instead of going straight down like I'm gonna do, you can cup it upwards. You'll see a lot of makeup artists doing this on celebrities where they'll bring the contour and cup it to make it look like they have bigger cheeks than they actually do. To make a line to about right there. Also gonna go on the sides of my forehead and bring it down pretty low because I have a bigger forehead and then I'll go a little bit right there not too too much if you have a small forehead I would just do like a thin line around the top just so everything's even um, I wouldn't bring it down too low on the sides unless you want your forehead to shrink I'm also going to go on the jawline right there as far as the nose goes that rhymes, the nose goes. It depends on your nose shape and it depends on how you want your nose to look. People ask me all the time if I've gotten a nose job. No, I just contour my nose. I have a rounder nose towards the end so I like to kind of contour all around right this area. But anywhere you contour is going to slim the nose. So if you have a really skinny nose, I would stick to highlighting and not contouring. But if you want to slim down your nose or give it definition, then I would contour the nose. So I'm just gonna take this on the sides. And also right here, kind of slim it a little bit, just like that. So now I'm gonna blend everything out and when you're blending creams or foundations, you want to use a synthetic brush. So these are, these three are all synthetic brushes. You don't wanna use something like this. This is more of a powder brush that works better with powders because you don't want the product to be disturbed. You don't want to soak in all the product Real hair brushes or natural hair brushes are gonna soak up a lot of that product and you're gonna feel like, where did it go? I'm gonna use a combination of these three brushes. I have the Morphe M404, which is a small stippling brush. Any stippling brush will do. I have the Morphe E56, which is a big synthetic brush. It's tightly packed. And then I have a smaller synthetic brush. This is the Morphe E45, so better for the nose area. If your hand cramps, take a break and then get back to it. I'm gonna take a little bit more foundation on this little brush to blend out the nose contour so it doesn't look muddy and it makes it look a little bit more natural. Once you blend everything, you now wanna set it. This is what it looks like. Just blend it out. It looks really natural, really nice. I am oily, so I have to set my bronzer and my highlight. If you're extremely dry, feel free to skip this step, but even if you are dry, I would set it with a little bit of some kind of powder, so that way it doesn't move throughout the day. I'm gonna be taking one of my favorite bronzers. This is also from Makeup Forever. I feel like a Makeup Forever ad today. This video is not sponsored. I just love their products, but this is the Pro Bronze Fusion in number 20. This is one of my favorite bronzers because it looks so natural on the skin. It has a skin-like finish also waterproof like it does not budge and it just looks so natural and since we already have so much cream and foundation on the face I don't want anything super powdery okay now we're gonna take Let's bake. So we all know what setting our concealer is, right? We've been doing that for years, where we just set with a powder, and that's it to set your concealer. Baking is setting on steroids. It's just a more enhanced and a more lengthy 
technique of setting your concealer. Baking is using a concentrated amount of loose powder with a sponge to set your concealer and then you let it set or bake. That's where the baking term. I usually just let my bake while I'm filling in my eyebrows for a few minutes or doing something else, putting on my lashes. And then you're gonna take another brush and dust off all of that excess powder because baking is using a lot of powder. I find that when I bake, my concealer looks absolutely flawless, so much better than just setting it, which is why I've been baking nonstop the past year. I'll let you in on a little secret. This is the best powder you will ever use to bake and set your concealer, which you guys have seen me use a million times. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. It is my holy grail, the best on the market. I like to bake usually as soon as I'm done with my concealer. So since it's been setting on my face for a minute, I have little creases on my concealer right now. So I'm gonna go back in with my beauty blender and blend them out. I usually use my beauty blender to bake, so you can absolutely use this. But today, I'm going to be using a square cosmetic sponge. You can find this at any drugstore. I got these at Ulta, but you can find them at Target, Walgreens. I'm going to spray a little bit of Fix Plus on it. So I'm just picking up some powder, not dabbing off any excess. And going right underneath of the eye. Right where we applied that concealer. I'm also going to clean up that contour a little bit. So if you ever bring your contour too far down, this is an easy way to clean it up. I'm gonna bring this all the way in towards the mouth. So while I'm letting this set, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my brows. So now I'm just going to dust off all this excess powder. I'm gonna take a little bit of NARS Orgasm Blush on this Duo Fiber Brush and apply it right above that contour. And I like to keep my blush farther back. I try not to bring it too far towards the apples of my cheeks because like I said, I have rounder cheeks and applying blush on the apples of your cheeks will draw more attention and make them look bigger, which I don't want. So now I'm gonna get my glow on. I'm taking my favorite highlighter, which is Laura Geller Gilded Honey, and I'm gonna wet my brush with a little bit of Fix Plus so it's even more metallic. I go right on the top of the cheekbone and kind of cup around the eye. I love this product because of the formula. It's not overly powdery, but it packs a punch. So it just looks amazing on the skin. It doesn't look too powdery. It doesn't emphasize your pores too much. So now I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and then I'll show you the final look. So this is the completed look. I really hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't, it would mean the world to me. I'll also link my other social media platforms down below if you wanna be friends. Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, it's just Amanda Ensing. I'm on social media all day, so come talk to me. Send me your baking faces, send in your contouring faces. I love interacting with you guys, so hit me up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye. I need a new intro. I feel like it's so awkward. Hey! Oh, this sounds super creepy. Oh my gosh. How many times can I say hey, guys? Uh, uh, uh. A cream contour and makeup. Makeup. Makeup? Baking makeup. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm so hungry, but I can't get this intro down. Amanda, get yourself together.